All right, so I just want to give you a couple of more really cool tips to make you perform this petty rescue exercise seven even better and easier. So the first tip that I want to give you, um, which is, uh, I think one of the most important tips you can, you can hear uh, for this petty rescue exercise number seven is to do everything slowly and stay calm. So be really relaxed, be calm, and then do the petty rescue exercise seven slowly. And the reason why this is so important is that a lot of people have a tendency to rush this skill when they're doing it. And why, it, it makes sense, you know? It's, it's your guts inside that are saying it. I mean, somebody is uh, 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 simulating that they're you're dying, they're not breathing, they're unresponsive. So our first instinct is, let's get these people out of the water as quickly as possible, get them to medical care as quickly as possible. And that is true. <laughs> we should definitely get them to medical care as soon as possible. But when people start to rush, then what happens a lot is that they make mistakes, silly mistakes. And those mistakes are usually getting entangled, getting, getting stuck. You know, you can't unclip that one clip because you're just going so fast. Um, or you, you, you can't take out the alternate air source or things like that. And solving the getting stuck part or any other mistake actually takes longer than if you would have just done it slowly from the start and not make a mistake at all. Um, you know, you can compare it, for example, have you ever been late you know, for, for something, let's say you're late for school, late for work, and um, you're, you're super rushing at home, you know, and then, and then you can't find your keys. So they're not on the usual spot. So you're, 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 you're running everywhere, you're trying to look everywhere, and while you're doing it, you hit your leg against the couch. Oh, that hurts. So now you have to sort of take a pause to, to deal with that. All right, finally you're okay. And now you're, you're looking under the couch, and they're, they're under the couch. So now you're trying to grab them, and now you're hitting your shoulder. And then you finally have your keys, and then you drop them. And then you uh, run to your bike or to your car, and, and you're trying to get the keys in the lock, but it doesn't work because you're so rushing. You know, what I'm trying to say is that all of this takes more time just because you're trying to go fast. So go slow, relax, think about what you're doing. You don't make mistakes and the skill will be over before you know it. Um, I love this, this quote or saying, what was it again? Um, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Have you ever heard this one? Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Absolutely love that. If you do that, think about this just before you do the Petty Rescue S7. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And, uh, and you will do it absolutely flawlessly and super, super, super easy. All right, another tip that I want to give you for the petty rescue exercise number seven is to um, have an equipment handler. That could be really handy as well. Like in the video that I just showed you, I, I didn't have an equipment handler. And it wasn't that bad because first of all, I'm in uh, the swimming pool, which is uh, uh, confined water. And especially confined water in a pool uh, makes it easy to collect any of the equipment later. Um, now, we used in this video soft weight belts, which means that we could easily drop them here at the bottom of the pool without uh, having a chance of damaging the pool. But a lot of you guys, you're probably going to be using um, hard weight belts or hard weights or integrated weights that might be a bit sharp as well. And uh, what can happen then if you just drop them, you can actually damage the pool. Now, if you're practicing this in uh, confined open water, then there is a chance that you, if you just drop the equipment, uh, that you actually lose it. It might be a, a small little current that might wash that mask away, or uh, it might be a muddy bottom or something like that, and then that mask um, will, uh, will maybe get into the sand and you, and you might lose it. Now, this stuff is of course very expensive. Uh, it uh, pollutes the environment. So have an equipment handler then. 
And an equipment handler is just uh, you know, a certified assistant, for example, um, that will be on the side, and then you, you give that weight belt to that person, you give the, the mass to that person, and then they can, uh, they can take care of it. Also, in the end, when you're taking your scuba equipment off, then uh, they can also grab that and um, uh, move that around a little bit, or move that a little bit out of the way. Um, on the Petty IE, if you worry about uh, not having an assistant for this, don't worry. Petty will take care of that and they will assign equipment handlers or they are the equipment handlers themselves. So don't worry about that at all. All right, so for the next tip, um, should I count out loud or not? Uh, this has been discussed uh, quite a lot, uh, sometimes heated uh, <laughs> uh, discussions as well. Um, the counting out loud is a style. So basically it goes like this. Every five seconds, you should give an effective rescue breath. Uh, when students are practicing the petty rescue exercise seven, um, doing their rescue course uh, or die master course and even the IDC, I've seen it so many times, and they don't count, then they have a, a chance of, you know, missing that step of giving an effective rescue breath. And that is a fail because that's a very important step. So it's really important to make sure that we are on time. And the counting then really helps. So if you go one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand and one one thousand two one thousand um so this really 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 helps and um i i i really like to do things like unboggling and stuff like that uh in the first three seconds so one one thousand click two one thousand three one thousand and what happens now people get so excited with with the unbuckling and trying to do it fast again, is that now they're, they're going, they're stretching it too long and they, they're trying to do too many clips in five seconds where it's one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, 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 and, and what just happened is that they basically just get stuck and, um, and trying to sort of like extend the time of going five, one thousand. <laughs> it's really funny, but it's wrong and, and you will fail and especially on your petty IE, uh, that is not a that's not a good thing to have. So I my, my tip is this: always just stop at number three. Yeah, even if you didn't unclip the first clip, if, even if you got stuck straight away, don't worry. You got all the time in the world. Um, remember, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Yeah, just just stop at number three. Number four, if you want to flick your hand, that's fine. You don't need to really with a pocket pass, but if you want to get some water off, that's fine. And then at five, breathe. And then just continue. And if that's the same clip because you got stuck, that's fine. They will never, ever, ever fail you when you get stuck on something, all right? But they fail you if you don't do the right breath at the five seconds. So it doesn't matter if you get stuck. Just get stuck for 15 seconds. It's not super smooth but it's better than, than skipping the breath. Okay, very important tip. You don't have to count out loud if you don't want to. Just count in your head uh, or uh, just unclip something and it's a feeling and, and then you can give that rescue breath as well. Uh, this will absolutely work also. You look super realistic, super smooth. However, it's not always that easy. So it's perfectly okay to count out loud. So again, you got three options. You can count out loud, you can count inside of your head, or don't count at all and just kind of do it on feeling. Uh, just be prepared then to maybe, you know, repractice the skill a few more times. But I do think you look really cool in the end. Uh, this is a bit opinionated as well. It's style. Uh, talk to your teacher, to your diving instructor, your your course director, your petty course director, and, and listen to their opinions. Um, and and th they can give you some really good advice as well. And, and that's for all the other steps too. There are so many different styles. I try to show you the new updated COVID-19 guidelines for the Petty Rescue Exercise number seven. I've talked this through with Petty just to make sure that everything was the way they wanted. Uh, but yes, of course you can change certain things uh, a little bit. So uh, experiment, play around with it, but don't just try to 
do things whatever you want because definitely certain steps you have to do by standards, by petty standards, um, and, and you can also fail on your IE. So whenever you're in doubt, talk to your petty instructor, your petty course director, um, but uh, whenever you're really in doubt, in the end, that's why, you know, if you become a professional too, Petty is there, you become a member, uh, call them up. They're so friendly, Petty. Send them an email, uh, social media, uh, send a, a postal pigeon, uh, smoke signals. Even Petty can understand smoke signals. And uh, ask them questions about this skill, and they would love to help you out. And remember, if Petty gives you a tip how to do it, and you do it like that, they can never fail you on the IE. Right? So whenever you, you're super in doubt, just contact Patty. Uh, but of course, you can leave also comments below. Uh, you can contact me too, and I will love to help you out with some really cool tips for the Patty Rescue Ice number seven, especially with the new COVID-19 updated guidelines. All right, so for the next tip, it's what about holding the mask? So in this video that you just saw, I was um, doing the EC, uh, yeah, holding. That's hard to show you right now, but it's kind of like this, where you have a really good seal on the mask, and then your other fingers are uh, on the cheek and under the jawbone, which means you can really easily open up the airway, and then turning the head uh, to give that, that breath. Now, remember that I was breathing like this in the video because those are the new Petty Rescue Exercise 7 uh, COVID-19 guidelines. Um, but in real life, of course, you would be breathing into the hole and, and, and that would be really effective. This way, we can keep our right hand under the neck for support throughout the entire skill. Also, don't take that off. A lot of students, they put the right hand under the neck and then they give the breaths, everything is fine. And then suddenly they let go of that neck and they start using two hands to unbuckle. Um, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, you should, uh, you, you, you should always keep that right hand under there. And then it's a bit unnatural, but with your left hand, you go like, you go like almost diagonal uh, to unclip things. Yeah? Uh, keep watching that video and, and practice and it's, it's really not so hard. Um, another way to hold the pocket is to do four fingers. So you have two fingers like this on the side and then the other two fingers, let me see if I can change this around. And then the other two fingers on the other side, so it's four fingers. All right, for my next tip, did I, did I mention slow is smooth and smooth is fast already? I probably did, huh? and I am annoying with it, but um, try to really remember this one. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, slower you do it, the easier the skill goes. Uh, I can't keep saying it enough. So I've seen uh, with a lot of students, they are so focused on doing the skill correctly um, that they that they really worry about forgetting steps. You know, it's a lot of steps. You need to turn someone, inflate, inflate, uh, weight bell, weight bell, just all these steps. So they're so focusing on that, is that when they come to the point where they give the two rescue breaths, then they just stay still and they start to unclip and you know you start to count and or not that's up to you right but you start to unclip and things like that um and 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 but they stay still but part of the skill is is to get to the exit point now during the petty rescue course we like to swim to the ladder of the boat the swimming pool the shoreline things like that um uh, during dive master course as well uh because then we can go into the next part of the skill, which is getting somebody out of the water. Um, however, on the Petty IDC course, you only have to specifically do Petty Rescue Exercise number seven. Uh, so without removing the person from the water. And the same counts for your Petty IE. So that's the uh, IE stands for um, Instructor Examination. So Petty Instructor Examination, where a Petty Examiner will evaluate your Petty Rescue Exercise number seven one more time. And in this particular case, the skill ends when the examiner tells you it's end, which usually is when you give those last two breaths in the end, or when you give two breaths and then remove the equipment. Um, so uh, in this case, a lot of times they will ask you to swim around in a big circle. So you're simulating swimming back to the exit point until they cut you. And that's why in my video, you saw me swimming around the swimming pool over there in the back. Um, and, and try to make it a big circle if you can, because otherwise you look awkward. You start doing like this, like, like a robot kind of thing. So you want to be smooth, so you need a, uh, a nice circle. 
and just keep swimming. Ah, if you sometimes stop for a second to give her breath or whatever, that's fine, but, but try to keep swimming as much as possible. Um, try to keep swimming as well and do things at the same time, if you can, uh, and that makes it look a lot smoother. All right, the next tip is another uh, baby of mine, and a lot of people think that this is a bit weird, and a lot of my students that laugh about it, but I don't care because I like it. And I have noticed that if you're watching a movie, yeah, an, an action movie, then what makes a movie really good, or what makes actors really good, and, uh, and that is the way they, they act. Yeah? The more realistic they make it look, the more facial expressions they have, the more, the more smoother the movements are that they do, and the more you're going to like that video. Like for example, if you have an action movie with a really cool actor who is about to uh, uh, jump out of a helicopter and, um, and, 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 and then land very beautifully on the floor and then handles the bad guy or something. So if you have a really bad actor and he's like really robotic and he like, almost military style, and he jumps out of the helicopter, he stands there, he walks up and says to the bad guy, don't do that. You're not gonna like that movie. And you are then going to uh, probably write on it on social media and give it a bad review. And you're probably now inspiring other people to not watch this movie or this, uh, this particular actor. And I think that's the same thing in, in diving with all skills, but especially with the rescue um, exercise number seven. Because people are so focused on not making mistakes again, is that they do it very robotic, you know, step one and step two and one, one thousand, two, one thousand. But uh, try to be a good actor because not only do you look really good, but you actually make less mistakes. Because if we go back to the actor and the helicopter comes and he like beautifully backflips out of that helicopter, a super beautiful lands like you know like a ninja on the floor and uh, catches his weapon in the air or something like that flicks his hair while he's doing it and then deals with the bad guy he not only looks really cool you're loving the movie but you probably don't make any mistakes because when you are super robotic you you probably when somebody you know throws the weapon you don't catch it or when when uh you jump out of that helicopter you uh you you don't land as beautiful you even fall down right so practice being really smooth and realistic now there's a trick for that the trick is to actually care so caring is really important right now so when you see your uh assistant your fellow student uh, or anyone uh, during this petty rescue exercise number seven skill, face down in the water, pretend that they are really unconscious, non-breathing divers that you want to save. Um, it's your friend, it's, it's everybody to you. And when you're now doing it, try to look like you're caring as well, you know, have that caring look on your face and um, look a little bit serious thinking you know i need to rescue this person and i know this sounds a bit silly but go back to my video in the beginning and see how i'm looking you know i'm i'm not laughing i'm not being a super robotic i'm really trying to save this person life uh the best i can so that's that's another tip that i can give you All right, so a final word then. Um, I hope that you really uh, like this video uh, and that it helps you to understand the Petty Rescue Eye exercise number seven with the new COVID-19 updated guidelines uh, a little bit better. Uh, I hope this will help you to pass your Petty Rescue course if you're doing that right now. Um, I hope this will help you to pass your Dive Master course and uh, especially your PETI IDC course uh, with the PETI IE in the end. If you weren't any of these courses and you, it did help you and you did pass, uh, remember to um, uh, yeah, hit that like button, that would really help. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. But please let me know in the comments below. I wanna, I wanna hear how your course experience were, how your experience with this PETI Rescue Exercise number seven skill was. Um, was it taught to you very differently? Uh, anything you can let me know, please let them know below in the, uh, in the comments. Don't forget the most important thing, like I keep saying, um, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. 
All right, guys. See you in the next video.